In every discovery, there is trial and there is error. There is experimentation and there is failure. And sometimes we're just plain wrong. Even the best discoveries come from an idea that's really spaced out. Since space exploration began, we have launched at least 25,000 explorers, satellites, shuttles, and ships. Much of what we've sent up there is getting old or has outlived its purpose. There are three satellites, for example. The no longer transmitting Vanguard 1 has been in space since 1958, Vanguard's 2 and 3 since 59. Now they're just orbiting space relics. Vanguard 1 celebrated 50 years in space March 17, 2008. She couldn't be reached for comment. Such a diva. There are lots of small items drifting around in orbit, from paint chips to metal particles. Maybe even astronaut Ed White's glove. He lost it in 1965. In 2005, embarrassed spacewalker Pierce Sellers sheepishly reported he lost the spatula. What was he, spacewalking and decided to make cookies? Man, this is the best space batter I've ever made. I'm just going to taste it. Oh, I can't because I lost my spatula. The spatula eventually fell back to Earth in 2006 and burned before it could hit the surface. But I'm more concerned that some of that big stuff is going to hurtle down on us, like hail. The fall of Cosmos 954 over northern Canada in January 1978 led to fears of radioactive contamination from its nuclear power packs and confirmed that space junk can and will fall to Earth. Well, that is terrifying. I mean, what goes up? It could come crashing down all around us. January 22nd, 1997. While big portions of a Delta II rocket fell elsewhere, a hot wire mesh hit the shoulder of Lottie Williams of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She was unharmed, but boy, does she have a story to tell. I'm on my way to the grocery store, I get out of the car, and then boom, a hot wire mesh hits me right in the shoulder. Second time this year. What about Skylab? Originally, that orbiting science station was supposed to have extra rockets that would keep it in orbit forever. But budget crunches and cost cutting sliced those away. Most of Skylab fell into the Pacific on July 12, 1979. Many of these space junkers contain harmful chemicals, mercury, dioxides, radioactive material. Plus, if it actually did hit a city, people could be killed. The good news is that most of the items in space come down sparingly. The speed of their trajectory keeps them in orbit. When they do come down, it's because the air resistance or drag effect slows their orbit. As they lose momentum, the hunks of junk descend to Earth. Plus, the U.S. surveillance network is currently tracking any object over four inches. But what about the other 18,000 pieces of man-made space debris that are being officially tracked? And the smaller pieces only being watched on occasion? Particles of space junk for which we're responsible. Who cares what happens to the very tiny pieces? What is a centimeter-sized piece of trash going to do anyway? Even small items travel at an incredibly fast speed, 17,000 to 21,000 miles per hour. So the damage that little tiny particle can do is potentially enormous. One time, a tiny paint chip dug into a window of the space station. Had it dug any deeper, it would have penetrated the window, causing destabilization of the craft's interior, resulting in harm to the crew. So a more immediate danger is to the space station or even to the astronauts. But luckily, we've been able to maneuver the space station out of harm's way the few times it's been confronted with space debris. And by we, I mean the astronauts, not me. I can barely drive a car. For the most part, junk will likely remain in orbit for years, and if it does fall, it should disintegrate long before there's any threat to Earth. But the ones that don't disintegrate? This is another case of us taking our natural world and outer world for granted. And to combat that, scientists and engineers are proposing a myriad of ways to bring that material down safely, contain it or destroy it so there are minimal after effects. We've got lasers to shoot it down, tethers to grab stuff, even giant Nerf football type nets that can gather the junk. Recycling begins at home. And everything is our home. Hmm? Philosophical. I like it. People are right to be concerned, but the possibility is so minimal. Still, we should always be vigilant when leaving our trash in space or anywhere. The fact that there's so much up there in the first place, now that's what we call... Spaced Out!